Hi, I am Sangeeta Dhavla, going to take you through the topic Drug Abuse and Treatment. The main objective of this chapter is to help you gain a clear understanding of the different types of drug abuse that exist and people fall prey to. Another objective is to focus on the treatment aspect of different types of drug abuse. Earliest records show that people were familiar with not only alcohol beverages but also a wide variety of psychoactive drugs that have taken a toll on the mental processes of the addicts. Drug abuse and dependence may occur at any age but they are very common during adolescence and young adulthood. Yes, we must have heard many adolescents falling prey to these drugs because of peer pressures. Clinical picture varies and depends on the type of the drug used, the amount of the drug the addict has used and the duration of drug usage and the personality makeup of the individual and the social setting from which the individual hails. There are different types of drugs which we are going to deal with in different modules. They are the narcotics, the sedatives, the stimulants, mild tranquilizers and hallucinogens. Under narcotics come the opium and its derivatives. What is opium? Opium is a bitter tasting powder which proved to be a powerful sedative and pain reliever. And that is the reason why it has gained the name morphine after Morpheus, the god of sleep in Greek mythology. Morphine was administered to soldiers during the civil war not only to the wounded but also to those who were suffering from dysentery. What happened as a consequence? A large number of soldiers returned to civilian life as addicts to the drug. Scientists thought that one part of the drug was responsible for treating the pain and another part was responsible for the addictiveness. So, when this morphine was treated with acetic anhydride, it could be converted into another powerful analgesic called heroin. Heroin gained a lot of acceptance and was widely prescribed in place of morphine in order to give pain relief and for other medical purposes. But in the long run, heroin turned out to be more dangerous than morphine as it was acting more rapidly and more intensely on the individual. As a result, heroin was removed from medical practice. It was found that opiates and derivatives were used in cough syrups and they were addictive. Unauthorized sales of these drugs became an offense and physicians and pharmacists were held accountable for the dose they prescribed. Owing to the strict control laid out by the federal and the local authorities, programs and education held for public and effective methods of detection and treatment, heroin addiction decreased during 1970s. We will now look into the kind of effects the use of morphine and heroin will bring about. Morphine and heroin are introduced into the body through smoking, snorting, eating, skin popping or mainlining. Immediate effect of heroin is a euphoric spasm of 60 seconds which is followed by a high. During this stage, the addict is in a very lethargic state. Pleasant feelings of relaxation, euphoria and reverie tend to dominate the person. These effects 
last for 4 to 6 hours. The regular use of opium derivatives will result in a physiological craving for the drug. If it is used continuously over a period of 30 days, then the drug becomes a habit. There is tolerance to the drug and so until and unless the person takes increased quantity of the drug, he will not achieve that high. When people do not get the drug for more than 8 hours, then they are bound to experience withdrawal symptoms. The severity of these symptoms depends again on a variety of factors, the amount of the drug used, the frequency with which the drug is used, the interval that the person takes between doses and the duration of addiction, the health and personality of the addict. The life of the narcotic addict is highly centered on procuring these drugs. So this leads to a socially maladaptive behavior. What does he do? He needs money to buy the drugs. Will he have the money? If he has it, it is fine. Otherwise, he will lie, he will engage in stealing and associate with undesirable companions so that he gets a shortcut to the drug. Ethics and moral values are at an all time low. There is lack of proper diet and this will lead to ill health and many other physical ailments. There is as a result a great deterioration of the general well-being of the person. How would you treat a person who has succumbed to the use of narcotics, opiums and its derivatives, morphine and heroin? The treatment is more or less similar to that of alcohol treatment. Support has to be extended physically and psychologically and enough help has to be extended during the withdrawal period. When there is not sufficient help during the withdrawal period, there is every chance that the person might get back to his old patterns of behavior. But once this withdrawal period is successfully dealt with, treatment is then focused on helping the person make adequate adjustments in his community. He is seen to it that he abstains from further use of narcotics. Methadone is one drug which is used in conjunction with the rehabilitation program. This satisfies the addict's craving for more of heroin without producing any kind of serious psychological impairment. Early in 1850s, bromides became popular as sedatives and were used by millions of people. And with every use, it will be closely followed by abuse. Excessive consumption of bromides resulted in toxic psychosis involving delusions, hallucinations and a lot of neurological disturbances. And as a result, the number of admissions into the mental hospitals also skyrocketed. Misuse of bromides waned in 1930s and was replaced by barbiturates. Barbiturates have their own legitimate uses but are extremely dangerous drugs that are associated with serious physiological and psychological dependence. What are the effects of barbiturates. What kind of sedation do the barbiturates bring about on the addict? Barbiturates are used as sedative drugs to calm patients and induce sleep. They act as depressants, slow down the action of the central nervous system. Shortly after taking the drug, the individual experiences feelings of relaxation and all his tensions and worries seem to disappear. This is followed by physical and intellectual lassitude and a tendency towards drowsiness and sleep. 
Strong doses of the barbiturates induce sleep almost immediately and excessive doses are found to be very lethal. Excessive usage of barbiturates leads to increased tolerance and physiological and psychological dependence. And closely going hand in hand, excessive usage of barbiturates will also bring about a whole host of undesirable side effects. There is slow speech, impaired comprehension, motor incoordination, depression and sluggishness. Prolonged usage leads to brain damage and personality deterioration. We have seen that the condition of the addict is really pathetic. What do we have to do to help him come out of the predicament in which he is in? We will now take a look at the treatment and the outcomes. The patient becomes anxious and apprehensive and manifests coarse tremors of the hands and face. Additional symptoms include insomnia, there is weakness, there is nausea, vomiting, rapid heart rate, elevated blood pressure, there is loss of weight and abdominal cramps. There is every chance that convulsions may occur between the 16th hour of consumption till the 5th day of the consumption. For individuals who are used to taking large doses, the withdrawal symptoms may last for a month or at times they may last just for a week. Psychotherapy is found to be effective in eliminating the dependence, the psychological dependence on barbiturates at times, but the problems may not be so severe as found in opiate addiction. What are stimulants? How are they commonly popular as? They are popular as amphetamines and cocaine. Both these are found to speed up the action of the central nervous system. We will first look into amphetamines. Benzedrine became easily available in the drug stores as an inhalant to relieve stuffy noses. Later, dexedrine, methadrine were introduced and out of these methadrine was considered as a potent stimulant. Considered as wonder pills, these stimulants helped people stay awake for long hours and function temporarily at a level that was beyond normal. The stimulants were used by soldiers and civilians who attended night work or drove long distance trucks. Even students who have not finished their preparation in time for their impending exams were found to use methadrine in order to stay awake and study for their exams. Athletes also were found to use the drug so as to improve their performance. The amphetamines have become popular with people who wanted to reduce their weight too. Cocaine. Cocaine is obtained from a plant and is ingested into the body by sniffing, swallowing or injecting. Cocaine gives a euphoric state which lasts for 4 to 6 hours and the user experiences a lot of peace and contentment. When chronically abused, cocaine brings about toxic psychotic symptoms. Owing to its anesthetic quality, it is used in place of morphine and cocaine is found to be a cortical stimulant and induces excitement and sleeplessness. How would you treat this addict? The treatment of course does not differ greatly from other drugs, aversion therapy, group therapy and other related therapies are found to be very helpful in bringing out the person from his state of addiction.
minor tranquilizer drugs are used for reducing anxiety and tension in cases of stress. Yes, it is stress that will put you under a situation where you experience wobbly knees, butterflies in your stomach, clammy hands, all these symptoms. But when you use a mild tranquilizer, you are at peace. There is a lot of physiological and psychological dependence with continued usage of the drug. Drowsiness might set in, there may be motor impairment and a few other side effects of using these tranquilizers. When these tranquilizers are used along with psychoactive drugs, it is found that they bring about undesirable side effects in the user. For instance, a medically prescribed barbiturate for sleeping may be much more potent than intended when it is taken with alcohol. How would you treat a person who has succumbed to continued usage of the mild tranquilizers? Again, the treatment is not any different that is followed for other drug addiction treatments. Aversion therapy, group therapy and other related therapies are found to have good results and there may be a lot of physiological and psychological dependence. So, one needs to take care, a lot of care in fact during the withdrawal stage. And who could you rely heavily on this caring aspect? It is the family that must be brought into the picture or if the person is in a hospital, probably it is the full time nurse or someone who could take complete care during the withdrawal stage and see to it that the patient does not show any kind of a relapse. Counseling and psychotherapy are also found to be highly effective in dealing with this kind of addiction. Hallucinogens As the name indicates, Hallucinogens will bring about hallucinations. LSD, mescaline, psilocybin, marijuana. These are the very popular hallucinogens that are used widely by people. Hallucinogens to define that are composed of drugs which include hallucinations. LSD is considered as a very potent form of the hallucinogen and it is an odorless, colorless and tasteless drug. LSD can produce intoxication with a very minute amount that is lesser than even a grain of salt. What are the effects that LSD has on the addict? The person after consuming LSD will go through 8 hours of changes in sensory perception, in the feelings of depersonalization and detachment. The major effects occur between 2nd and the 4th hour. Physiological effects include increased heart rate, elevation in the blood pressure and faster breathing. You will see that there is a tremendous intensification of the sensory perception. After some time, the objects become clearer, sharper and brighter. The LSD trip cannot always be pleasant. Sometimes it is a very pleasant experience, but there is also a chance that the person might experience a lot of trauma. Flashbacks is an involuntary recurrence of perceptual distortions occurs during this stage. Flashbacks are considered to be very common in people who are heavily dependent on LSD. But for those who have used it only once, the occurrence of flashback can be almost negligible. Treatment and outcomes for 
LSD addiction. The treatment requires hospitalization because it is more or less a medical matter. The outcome depends on the personal stability of the individual prior to taking the drug. If the person is determined well enough to get back to his normal lifestyle, then probably the commitment he will show during the treatment will be far higher than otherwise. Brief psychotherapy is also found to be highly effective in treating the various psychological dependence factors that occur. Counseling is also found to offer a lot of help in tackling flashbacks. Now we will go on to other hallucinogens mescaline and psilocybin. These are two other popular hallucinogens. Mescaline is derived from a small disc like growths of the top of peyote cactus. Psilocybin is derived from sacred Mexican mushrooms called Psilocybe Mexicana. Both these drugs are found to have mind altering hallucinogenic effects. Mariana, this is also considered as a mild hallucinogen, comes from cannabis sativa and can be smoked in the form of cigarettes or in pipes. In certain places, marijuana is also available as baked cookies and other foods. Marijuana is related to another strong drug called hashish which is derived from a cannabis plant. It is made with a gummy powder. Hashish also is smoked, chewed or drunk. What are the effects of marijuana? The specific effects of marijuana are found to vary greatly and depend a lot on the quality of the drug used, the dosage of the drug used and the personality and mood of the user and the user's past experience with the drug. When marijuana is taken, it gives a great high whenever it is inhaled or smoked. There is a state of mild euphoria, increased feelings of well-being, pleasant relaxation and a sensation of floating away. The sensory inputs of the person are enhanced. Music sounds uh, very melodious, colors look brighter, smells seem richer in food, tastes better. There is a sense of distortion of time. An event that lasts just for a few seconds may seem to cover a much longer span. The short term memory of the person may be affected. When smoked, marijuana is absorbed rapidly and its effects appear within seconds to minutes. Use of marijuana may lead to unpleasant as well as pleasant experiences. High dosages of marijuana can lead to extreme states of euphoria, hilariousness and over talkativeness. The short range physiological effects of marijuana include decreased heart rate, slow reaction time, increased appetite and dry mouth and bloodshot itchy eyes. Long term effects however are not ascertained clearly. What are the treatments for marijuana addicts? Again, a combination of the medical as well as the psychosocial efforts will bring about normalcy in the life of the hallucinogen addict. Hospitalization is called for only in certain cases where the severity of addiction is considered as being very high. Psychotherapy of course has its own significant role to play when it is dealing with the addict directly and also dealing with the support system that he has. When everything is clearly explained to the addict as well as to his immediate family, they will see to it that the psychological dependence on the drug 
can be overcome easily. So, to wind up, we have seen five broad categories of drug abuse, the narcotics abuse, the sedatives, the stimulants, mild tranquilizers and hallucinogens.